welcome back to Whispering Pines. I'm Toast Harbell, and I reckon this is episode number 15, 367, 133, episode 1096, 298, our very first broadcast, 426. Tonight's a special one for me, and not just because it's the last episode of the season. You see, it's also the anniversary of the night that started this whole operation going. The night I signed my first act, the night I met these two, Donnie Franks and Midge Pruitt, better known as Donnie and Midge. Now, of course, everybody knows their names nowadays, but back then, they were just a couple of kids who liked to harmonize. Before all the Pine Records, before the sold-out tours, before the triumph and tragedy, they were singing their hearts out at a dive in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and I happened to walk in. Now, you can call it fate, you can call it luck, you can call it whatever the hell you want to call it. It was that night that led me to this moment. So tonight, we're going to celebrate that journey. Of course, the boys are going to rip through a passel of songs, too. So, settle in. It's sure to be a good one. here at Whispering Pines. Whew, look how young we were. 
Dang. Oh, and maybe you'll recognize the drummer on that session too. Efty Lefty, none other. Most people don't know he played on that session. Their original drummer was Midge's brother, Gary, but he got busted selling illegal fireworks three days before the session. That knucklehead. We were almost sunk before we set sail. Luckily, I found old hefty paradiddling on pink hounds outside of Bowling Alley in town. <laughs> Boy, I'm sure glad I met him. Hefty introduced me to Mickey Driscoll, who wrote our theme song, and introduced me to Roy Casey, who introduced me to Frankie Lou, and on and on, like dominoes falling. Hmm, yeah, I sure couldn't have done it without Hefty. <laughs> we had us some good times. Boys been looking back at their younger days, too, all the way back to some of the first songs they ever recorded. Of course, their memory seems a little blurry. Sounds pretty different than what I remember, but it ain't half bad. What you got cooking, boys?
speaking of going wild, how about these fellas? They were wild as hell. Getting them into the studio was like herding up a gang of ornery badgers. And they weren't fighting with each other, they were fighting with me or the engineers. I can't say I agree with the way they went about things, but at least they had an ethos. As nihilistic as it may have been, and I respected that. You gotta believe in something, even if it's nothing. Time and space 
It was Boo Boo Slippers who introduced me to Remy Fusil, the Cajun Cowboy. Now, most folks consider him to be kind of a novelty act, and he was a jokester, no doubt. But he wrote a damn fine song now and again when the inspiration struck him. And I know who inspired this next tune, but my lips are sealed. What you're looking for won't be found easily It grows upon the mountain in a sacred place Up beyond the clouds in ancient ground so they sit And many men have died tricky
I don't care much for that kind of talk, Mr. King. Well, I don't care much for your program, Mr. Tarbell. Quentin King. Now, that's one fella I never did get along with. He was so full to the brim of piss and vinegar and plenty other foreign substances. Seemed to think he was God's gift to the world. I'll tell you, he was so far up his own... Well, no point in speaking ill of him. Besides, he did record our most successful album to date, which, I have to admit, riles me a touch. <laughs> Even have the audacity to call it my smash hits. Well, it went quadruple pine. So, I guess you were right about that one, you old bastard. Boys, give me something to cleanse my palate, would you? Thank you.
Welcome back, folks. Our next guest is a dear friend of mine. He runs a honky-tonk out in the desert called The Broken Bottle, where I've scouted many an act over the years. But he's also an author, and he's got a new book coming out called Ends of the Earth. Please welcome to the program, Mr. George Ranger Johnson. George, thanks a lot for coming by. So, what can you tell us about this new book of yours?
You ever get the feeling like the universe is coming loose? Like you might blink your eyes and wake up in some other time, in some other place? Like your consciousness is hooked up to the cosmic selector, but someone else is at the controls? That's how I feel tonight. And it's the damnedest thing.
back on that fateful night all those years ago. I was at a low point in life, probably my lowest. That was way back in my gambling days. I'd had a bad run and I was lighting out for the territories, trying to get away from the jam I put myself into. Hell, I didn't know where I was going. I was just driving. Sun was on its way down and I was in a long stretch of nothing feeling very alone, very hopeless. I could see a, a big lightning storm way out on the horizon. And I felt like it was coming for me. I felt like my days were numbered. But then I saw a glow up ahead, shining like a beacon out there in all that big darkness. I came up over the hill and I saw that it was an old roadhouse with some neon out front. Nothing too particular about it, but it was calling to me. So I pulled in. Inside, it was your typical watering hole. A few drunks nursing their beers, uh, some fellas shooting pool. There was a jukebox at the back and a little stage in the corner. Ben was changing over, so I bellied up to the bar, flirted over my last dollar for a glass of boot heel, and waited. Shortly, two youngsters took to the stage, a three-piece band backing them up. I could tell that they were nervous, but there was a certain composure and professionalism about them that struck me. And then they started singing. Now, I'll tell you what, I ain't never heard nothing like that before or since. It was like all those darksome clouds that had been trailing me were just blown clear away. I decided right then and there to dedicate my life to giving people what I'd been given in that moment, to sharing what I'd heard and felt that night. That's what I've been doing ever since. Here's a new rendition of one of the songs I heard that night and the first tune we ever cut here at Whispering Pines.
So another season comes to an end here at Whispering Pines. Dang, it's been a humdinger. The boys are clearing out. They're heading out for the open road with their new album in tow. I'm happy for them, of course, but I'll sure miss having them around, hearing all their racket. I've been doing some thinking myself, and maybe it's time I was moving on to. Can't hold on to the past forever. Time's blur comes for us all. It's been delightful, folks. So long. Good luck. Goodbye. Until next time, may you live until you die.